Alright YouTube, it's Matt Simon here again. Today I've got a cool one, this is soloing over a static chord. And what this means is it's E minor all the way through. So I'm going to show you some cool ideas and some weird little noises to get out of your guitar. Alright, so here's the explanation of how that was put together. So, I started with a bend up to the D, and this is the flat 7. It's quite common to bend up to the root note. That's quite boring, uh, whereas if you bend up to the 7, it's got a bit of tension because it wants to shoot back up, so it's almost there, so it gives a bit more tension. Come down. So this is a whole tone scale, which sounds like this. It's a very unusual sound, um, it sounds a bit artificial and robotic. It's very unnatural because most scales have a combination of half tones and whole tones structured up. All whole tones just sound weird. Which is exactly what I wanted for this. So. It ends on the G sharp, which is a major third, but here, because it's gone through the flat six and the flat five, it just sounds a bit weird, which is exactly what I wanted. And then shift down to end on the D again, but this is a note, this is five notes in the whole tone scale, so it sounds even weirder. So we've got the four. Very weird, which is cool. Then the second part, we've got a E minor seven flat five arpeggio, again sounds a little bit weird and the flat five gives it some instability, which is nice. Then we come into, a, it's like a diminished scale. This is a six note scale, which is technically a hexatonic. which fits very nicely around the fingers and it contains a flat 5 and the natural 6 which is a little bit unusual. So this I wanted to finish on the E so I used came up to the C sharp and then slide the first finger up so that's fingers 1, 2 and 4 what I deliberately didn't want to do was go through the E. I wanted to sound a little bit more off. So by targeting the note from below then above, it gives a little more unstable feel. Now this is quite common in jazz playing. Uh, you'll quite often target notes. So here's an E minor triad. You could approach from below. That sounds pretty cool. You could also approach from above, which is done less often, but you can also target from below, above, and then hit the note. Which is quite cool. So that's what I did here. So I went from below, above, and onto the notes. Now the next section, which is the third quarter, I wanted to have something that sounded a bit more stable. If everything is unstable, it can sound just like a mess. And also, with a bit of stability, it gives real contrast. So the unstable bits are a bit more exciting, but then it's not all there is. So for this, I decided to use just normal Phrygian. And specifically, just the semitones. Also, I made sure that the rhythm was very stable on this. And this is a key thing, as another principle taught by the mighty Sean Baxter. He calls it, there's three different gears of speed. There's the first gear, which is... Basically noise. There's the top gear, which is just basically flailing around shredding. 
So there's no real groove, there's no specific rhythmic um, divisions. It's just a blur of notes. So the the middle gear, and this is what really separates the pros from the amateurs, is having that groove and that stability and being able to... So what this does is it really locks in with the groove and carries the song forward. If you miss out this middle gear, it sounds a lot like a Slayer solo where they basically start do some dive bombs and then... It has no real structure and groove to it, so by having that grounded groove in it, it just makes it sound a lot more grounded, a lot more structured, and it flows, and it just sounds a whole lot better. So, simple rhythm. And I could have gone down to... to pull the tension down on the D-sharp there, but I decided to stay up just to hold everything almost normal before it then descends and it gives a bit of contrast when the, it does descend. So it goes down to the B and the B flat. This is a cool lick that I really like doing. So you play the B and then the B flat you bend back up to the B. It's a wobbly kind of lick and on this B flat give a really big vibrato. What I wanted to do as well with this section is sound cleaner and more pure. So the lead up coming up to it, it's almost like, not like a blur of notes, but it's quite busy. Whereas when it then contrasts into, especially with the front pickup, that gives a much cleaner, purer sound. Again, contrasting to the early aggression. With the bridge pickup, giving that more bite. So switching up, and then so you've got the purer sounds as the contrast. So you've got from the aggressive bunches of notes into a cleaner, purer, more solid groove. And to finish, I uh, use the whole tone scale again. And this again, three note per string fits quite nicely over the fingers. You can use fingers one, two, and three for everything. And then finishing it again with a burst of notes. And this is the R2D2 noise. So with harmonics, if you have two notes on a clean sound that are moved together, about two in there. It doesn't clash too much, whereas with distortion you have the original notes and the harmonics that are filled in stack up. So when you move the notes against each other, there's more to clash. So if we use that on the distorted sounds... So what I did here was start on a flat 5 interval and really push that bend, it's almost three notes, push it as far as you can so the harmonics really interact with each other, almost like little flies on each other. So for that, really bend that up literally as far as you can and it's quite hard to hit that, I had to do a couple of takes for the solo. And what I did as well is this was picked but to give myself more time to get the things into place, uh, legato that, which then allows the third, the second finger to come in, and get that really weird R two D two noise. Thanks for watching, I hope you got some cool ideas from this video and as always the tabs and pictures are on Patreon. Let me know what you thought in the comments and give me suggestions for future videos you'd like to see. Thanks.